crypto market right now is at a critical stage. If you are looking at a short term volatility, you may not actually see that. But when you zoom out and try looking at different assets on a macro scale, there is something alarming happening in some assets. This is a little bit of the portions which I've done for the members. Now that's like a long list of assets, but here we are trying to give you that idea so you can do it yourself and check for your entire portfolio. If you have 30, 40 assets, you will have to take time to understand this. Because say for example, this is XRP. And the reason we are here in XRP as a big holders is because of its fundamentals, agreed. But the price action now is slowly going in towards the fundamentals. It's trying to price that in. And a lot of people would ask like, no, 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 no. I don't see any price action happening to the upside. But if you look at this, you will get that idea. We all wanted XRP to be decoupled from Bitcoin. You know, not in the short term, one hour volatility, but at least on a daily scale towards three day, weekly, that kind of scale, right? If you observe the price action between Bitcoin towards XRP here, you can get that idea. Now you can go look at them individually and then combine them here. You will still get the same idea. So we are going to try and break these down in a way you understand that and you can repeat that for your portfolio so you are now in a better state. Otherwise, when the next run up comes and in your portfolio you have 30 assets and 20 of them are in the worst position, you may not able to get even the average run up. So that is what we are going to discuss today and it's just coming right now. Welcome to the Sinefic Investor Family, where the normal retail guys learn how to become the next top 10 percentage of the world. Yes, things are a little bit different on a short term. You're slowly trying to do a reaccumulation here, which is actually a good thing. This can be considered as your short term accumulation. You broke higher. It's all good, great. But the primary question you should ask yourself is say, this is a macro view of the entire altcoin cycle. Fine. This is your support resistance zone. Fine. You see the entire space holding on to this structure, which means it's not the price or the market is not below this. So when you see an asset below this territory or even below this territory, that should be alarming for you. Believe me, there are assets which are even below this right now. That is not going to be in a good position, even if we go back up, because we all know that fundamentals are important and CPI is going to come and then followed by that, you're going to get another rate hike. It can be 35 basis point. It can be 50 basis point, whatever. It most likely will be less than 75 basis point. And depending on, depending upon what comes ahead inside this CPI, that can vary. If the CPI is dropping even harder, then the Fed may go even lower. 35 is really a possibility in that case. But when the market go up with that positive news, what you need to understand is an asset holding onto this major level of support can bounce higher than the asset here because this asset will bounce great, but it's going to get rejected here or at least get resisted here. There is going to be a lot of supply demand mechanism playing out here, which will make it a little bit difficult. So now imagine if that asset is here. Now it's going to be really hard. Imagine you broke this one, broke this one and you're here right now. To go back up, you need to break this one. Then you need to break this one to go back. Why is that important? Because when you are getting resisted here and you're slowing down and other assets are already going up, a lot of people will do that monkey jumping. They see like, okay, that's going high today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, it's continuing and this one is doing nothing, right? Then again, it will slow down here. People will repeat the same thing. 
So in that sense, if you do have assets here, look at their fundamentals and understand if that price action is completely based on the fundamental, is that project failed? If the project has changed fundamentally, then there is a huge possibility this is the market price. Market has priced that in. If not, then that's value. Great, the price is lower, you can buy even more. But still, this cycle may not be the right cycle for it to go to reach that value in price. So this is going to be really important for all of us. Now, breaking this one. This is XRP. Great. We know what all dramas happened recently, right? Mm, Luna crashed, Celsius, FTX, you know, one by one we saw a lot of crypto institution getting hammered. Even during all this time, XRP stood this ground. Now, there are assets which stayed here without coming back down here. But still, as a macro large cap asset holding on to this level during this time is really, really important. And that's fundamentals coming back into picture. Why? Because when you observe, even right now, XRP is holding this support and Bitcoin broke lower. You should be understanding that market is trying to understand something, right? When we dropped here, you can see that momentum. Then later when we dropped here, that reduced the momentum here. You're close to this. Whereas Bitcoin, this one was like 500 billion in cap and it dropped towards 330. So that was a big drop. Now I'm using the caps here for Bitcoin and XRP. Now you go into that one, zoom in and you're trying to see like okay here you got a bullish divergence in xrp which is actually a great thing to observe but in bitcoin you don't get that bullish divergence that is something different in one asset which is a big one you're not getting anything showing okay we are going bullish whereas in another one it's starting to show bullish segment meaning buyers are slowly entering, they are doubling down. Each time the price comes close to this range, someone is buying huge, they are not letting the price go lower than this, right? That's what's happening here. Now, you come here, this is XLM. It's similar, right? But you're not at the top of this. So if you come back here, you will look at this inverse head and shoulder or the rounded bottom, and that resistance here, previous support resistant zone is acting as a support and you put in a double bottom there which is great then you have the bullish divergence there which is even better for xrp but when you come down here yes you are in a falling wedge but right now you are at that bottom part so if someone put a huge sell order and the price breaks through this one the confidence level in the market may drop. Now, that's not the original case. Most likely, it's a falling wedge. You're going to go back up. But what you have to look at is if the zone break, it's not good for that asset. Now, you are slowly building bullish divergence, not as heavy as our, what you can see in the RSI for XRP, but you're still trying to build something. Then there are assets like this where it's trending lower within a channel and right now you don't actually get too much bullish divergence there. The only way you can become bullish is by saying, okay, we are back in the support range if we don't break this to the downside. Now, the possibility inside this is you got hit here in the resistance and if you're coming back down to the support to retest this, now you broke this level. Now you lost that level. So maybe next 30 days, 40 days, 50 days, if you're not breaking higher, it's going to be a little bit messy here. Now, is that all? No, that's the hard part because the market tries to put in a lot of different narratives. If you are listening to this, Brad Garlinghouse kind of gives you that one clear perspective saying, I don't care about the XRP price over the next three days, three weeks, three months. I'm looking for next three years, five years, 10 years like that. They are one of the biggest investors in this asset and others give you the perspective of how value is going to come into this network. So fundamentals are ever green here 
it's not going to fade because of the use case. That's completely sensible, fine? Then you actually come into the market and you look at a lot of different assets, all of them fluctuating. But again, you go into this quarter and you want to actually see what is doing well, what is not. And you see coins like Doge at the top, still XRP is there, along with Quant. We all know how well Quant actually did, but in this entire quarter, XRP and Quant is kind of working in the same manner. So I'm looking like, okay, we just observed this particular quarter, XRP is slowly moving away from Bitcoin. Great. And here, it is comparatively closer towards Quant. That's actually a good news, positive stuff and all. Why is that? Because when you actually go in to look at Quant, you can actually see one trend here. Say if I'm taking pulling that chart out from the coin trader, on a macro, you can actually see a trend. Let me clear this and try to give you that perspective. If you are looking for a trend, this is a clear one. If you are looking for the resistance in that trend line, this is a clear one. Now, you may have different indicators suggesting you may actually come back down to, you know, 75, 85, that range like this, I've worked to the downside, reaching the 200 day moving average or just above that and go back up. Fine. But unless you break this down and give a confirmation to the downside, this trend is not changing. Fine. You are inside this and you're moving up, which is actually a good news. So this one is trending higher. It is way way different than Bitcoin in any correlation metrics. It's actually way better. And now XRP is starting to look like this. We all know both of them target payments. Both of them have the interoperability ledgers, over ledger and interledger, right? So if the market is starting to put price on these and they're slowly getting back into the market, that's something huge. But yes, the SEC case is going to limit US-based banks, which will be the largest repositories because most of them deal in dollars, right? That is now kept outside. But once we get some kind of information for the case saying, okay, XRP as an asset is not security, what they sold before, say the institution Ripple, can be a security, let them pay fine. That's different. That can happen and this will push the adoption even further. New institutions are going to come, but that is just a speculation, right? What we are here for is reality. Great. Now you actually go into the XRP chart and you are literally going into a four hour time frame because fluctuations do matter, right? This is the support level right now. But if you look at the price, it's putting in lower highs consistently. So the chances for the price to break this to the downside is higher. So what we have to look at that in that thought process is like how low this can go. So if that is breaking to the downside, now you have a little bit more space to reach this trend line. And if that's breaking, broken, now you're coming all the way back down here. So in price terms, XRP, if it's actually breaking this to the downside, you can literally watch the price come down towards 0 0.36, 0 0.33, maybe not 0 0.33, 0 0.35, 0 0.36 range. That's a huge possibility if we are breaking this. So this is Coin Trader, which is still showing you we are close to this range. We have not actually pushed it to the downside, whereas on the Coin Trader side, a trading view side, it's actually showing we are breaking to the downside which is actually important. You should be looking at different exchanges and then try to put in that idea, right? So if you are there, you can look at different assets. Say I was really about to look at uh, TWT, Trust Wallet Token. We have done that before, so I'm not repeating it. But keep in mind, each asset has a different trend right now. And some of them are clearly following an asset which is trending lower, which may not be the best thing for your portfolio for sure. Because we want, if you have 10 assets, you just need to make sure seven to eight of them are not in that category where 
your price is below this support. Your price is way lower than this critical level. Because if you're breaking this one, okay, fine. Now you're looking for this support. But when you come back up, it's going to be a little bit slower than others who don't have that much resistance to the upside. They will have short term, but they don't have long term macro resistance. But for the assets which broke below, they do have. So now you come back into the market, say, for example, this is Ether. You go on a weekly and you see like, OK, this is almost same as the altcoin market. So one thing which is positive to say about is like, OK, you are holding on to this level. You're way above that. That's good. But the second thing, which is negative, is like, OK, you are above this and you're way above this. So if there is a selling pressure, you can still come back lower. Now, I'm not saying it's going to come to $340, $350, but there is still a possibility where you may come and test this range. Now, considering the current price and the recent lows, that is still possible, right? Because we have not yet started putting on a higher high on a weekly time frame. So for Ether, it's actually clear you are slowly trending lower and your lows are going with it. It's not like you're changing something. You need to, if you want to go bullish, you want to observe something changing. At least the lows are now at the same level or the lows are making higher even though the highs are low. There is something the market is trying to price in, whether the buyers and sellers are fighting or they are now getting neutralized or one is dominating the other, right? That's what we are trying to look at. And here, as of now, you are still inside this trend. So what's possible is that if you don't break here, you're going to go up then you're going to come back down. You're going to move. Now that's going to be the boring section where the high frequency trading bots do this drama and push your patience. That's the hardest part. And this is on a three day time frame. So understand, even if it's just like this, while we draw, it may take another two, three, four weeks for this to play out. Unless this breaks to the upside or downside. Hopefully, it breaks upside. But when it breaks to the upside, now you can clearly see this is going to be a big resistance. But the difference is, if the price was below here, that's a macro resistance. So there are assets which are there right now. And it would be better if you take that and think about something else which is above this level. Why is that so important? Because this is wave one. In wave one, usually we correct back lower to this support and then start wave two. That is something really interesting. You go back here, clear all this trend from quant and try putting in a support zone here. And you will identify, okay, this is a clear support level. Where the price broke higher, it retested, it bounced, it retested, it bounced. Great. What happened eventually? That is even more interesting. Because when you broke higher, came back, went up, came back, this level is always supportive. Why is that so important? Because this is your short term wave one, then you went for wave two. Keep that in mind. Here you start at like 0.19, then you went all the way back up to $16. Then this cycle, you came lower here. This is like the macro perspective we are talking. And inside that one, you started from March 2020 as wave two in the macro cycle. That's interesting. And that's why from $1.5, you went all the way up to $400 right now. And it did not show you like this cycle is done. Because for this cycle to be done, this wave two, the macro to be done, you need to get another wave inside this. That's why you're like, okay, that's so confusing. One is macro, then you look at the micro, then the nano, it's confusing. But just one thing, easy thing to remember is the trend. If you see that trend line is being broken, okay, now that's not a good sign at all, right? Now, this is not a big cap coin but it does represent the altcoin market space. How does that happen? Let's look at the altcoin on a weekly. Zoomed out, this is what it looks like. 
Now, if you actually plot that trend, you will observe the support going up, which is actually great, but you do have standard deviations here. You break to the upside, you come back down, but to get a little bit more clarity, you can just zoom in on that area and see whether that has been acting as a resistance and a support. It seems like it is. So you connect there and you're like, okay, I'm being conservative. And I think if we are bouncing from here, we are going all the way back up here at least or about this range. Because usually when we get this kind of a long wick, I remember today while doing the digest, we saw an asset which had this long wick here and then went back down, then eventually went even higher than that. Now that was actually highlighted in that post because I intended this one. This is also going to go back up. We don't know in which time because time is the hardest part because right now the institutions are entering this cycle and institutions have a long time horizon. They are not like the retailers. So they will actually play with your emotions, your psychology and your patience. So while they try to do that, it's clearly up to you how to manage them, right? So be prepared for that and learn on a regular basis. Stay educated. So they are not going to take your money and go away, right? So if you receive value, please do hit that like and subscribe button. And if you have three to five minutes more, please go to next channel. This is my second channel. And if you would like, now this is not crypto. If you want to hear about life, success and the future where you can build wealth, this can be interesting for you. So that's it, guys. I'll meet you on the next video. Bye-bye.